Hey, what's up? Thanks for hopping in the car with Christian Addiction Recovery, a channel where like-minded people come together so that we can discuss new ways to live the best life possible. All right. And the reason why I'm holding my dog right now is my dog. Is you sure we sure? Hey. All right. I'm going to put it down now. Oh, hop down. Oh, you can stay right there. The reason why I showed her, because I want to talk about God's grace. So you're probably asking, what does your dog have to do with the grace of God? And I'm going to tell you, okay? So a few months ago, when I found this dog, she was over at a friend of mine's house. I was there, and the dog came wandering up, and... She was just in such rough shape. We're out in the country, okay? So there's no other houses really that close. And she's got this long hair, but it was all matted up and nasty. And so I was like, oh, okay, man, maybe she needs some food. So I tried to give her a little bit of food, and she wouldn't come anywhere close. So I could tell us that she'd had a rough life. And so I finally get her to come over and get a little bit of food. She won't, she wouldn't come near me, but... When she came over and got food, I could tell that her belly was real big or like still big, like she had just had babies. So I was like, hmm, okay, well, I don't want to, you know, I, I would sure like to help this dog out, but I don't want to take her away from her babies. So I didn't mess with her. And so after she came up and got food and went away, I was praying to God and say, you know, pray for that little dog, God. And, and I really f asked him, if that dog comes back, or, you know, if you want me to take care of that dog, send that dog back around, okay? And I'll give him a shower and send her on her way. So, sure enough, three weeks later, the dog comes wandering back out of the, the woods while, we're, while we were getting home. And so I was like, oh, okay, great. So I'm going to give her some more food. And this time, we decide we're going to give her a bath. And so we try to get her, and she's... She, she she was traumatized anything was freaking her out i mean even if like it took a while for us to even just be able to get get a hold of her so we took her inside and gave her a bath and we could tell that her memory glands had shrunken quite a bit so she was no longer feeding the puppies so we got her cleaned up and we tried to put her back outside so that we could follow her to the puppies if that was the case, but she would not leave our side. She was, she was so thankful that she had got some help and, and some food and got cleaned up. And she was just, she's just the best, best dog. It was kind of cool because I was like, oh, God, thank you for sending this dog back around. She's in such rough shape. And I really felt like God was kind of hinting to me like, you were in pretty rough shape when I found you not too long ago. And I'm like, well, you know, fair enough. And um, so I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it all up here in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to talk today about, again, God's grace. So I want to read the definition of grace. Okay, this is a dictionary definition. It's, well, Bible dictionary definition. It's the free unmerited favor of God. Okay, so that's cool. Favor, favor of God. What does favor mean exactly? So I looked that up and it means approval or support. So when you put it all together, it means the free, not deserved approval or support from God. So the scripture says that we are saved by grace through our faith. So I just thank God so much that I admit him when I was young and put my faith in Jesus, even though I had a really hard walk after that. He, because I put my faith in him, I had his grace and his grace brought me all the way through. Okay. So long, long story short, and I talk about it in my other videos my, about my testimony, but I was addicted to drugs for a very long time. And in and out of relationships and just never was getting anything right. And after my last relationship, I just kind of fell apart and went back to some, I had been clean for a little while off the opiates. And when that happened, I just kind of fell apart. So I went and tried to get some, uh, some opiates and 
uh, some pills. That was my thing. And the guy didn't have any pills, so he said he had some powdered heroin. And I was like, well, I don't want to shoot it or anything. And he's like, oh, it's cool. You know, I'll show you how to and do it without that. And so thank God I didn't shoot it because it had fentanyl in it. And the way I did consume it overdosed me. Okay. And then I made it to a Christian rehabilitation facility that absolutely just gave me all the tools to change my life. And that's Honey Lake in Florida. If you want to check it out, it's a really great place and I highly recommend it. Um, but you know, you may say, well, may like kind of come across as like the grace was the getting to the rehab and and that was the grace of god but it was also the grace of god that i overdosed okay but for this little dog it her her overdose was whatever experiences took her from whichever you know, place that she was, that she was obviously getting abused because of how frightened she was. So, you know, whatever her circumstances, even though she was out there in the woods for three weeks, those circumstances brought her to a family that loved her and is taking care of her and gives her all kinds of belly rubs. Yeah, she likes the belly rubs. All right, I'll stop. So it's real easy when you're living in the world to kind of have that shame and to feel like you're too far for, from God, but that's not the case. You know, see, see, Christ did not come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. He didn't come to say, look at all the bad stuff you're doing. He came to say, let me pull you out of that bad stuff. I love you. I remember what really started to help me understand how God sees me. Okay. I used to, obviously, because I had lived a life that made a lot of bad choices, so I had collected all kinds of shame, and I really thought, like, how could God love me? Look at me. I'm just a drug user, you know, just can't get anything right in life. I've never, you know, done anything good or, you know, beneficial for society, just anything. I mean, just look at me. I'm a bum. And so this is, this is, the, this is what kind of helped me. I remember I must have been listening to a sermon or something like that, and it was probably talking about the grace of God. And so, and he was talking about a courtroom, you know, because the Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren, and we are the brethren. And so Satan is always trying to say, look at him, he's a drug user. He's, he's had sex out before marriage. He cusses all the time. He stinks, I don't know, whatever. But that's what he's doing, okay? So, but Jesus is, is how you would say, it. He's, a, he's our advocate, okay? He stands between Satan, or between us and God. And what I kind of realized, or what I kind of thought about was like in a courtroom, and Jesus was my lawyer, and the devil's over there, he's the other lawyer, and he's, he's throwing all the accusations there and everything. And Jesus is like standing in between God and myself. And when God was looking, like, like Jesus had like a hue around him, like a, a fog, a mist that he was just kind of like an aura, you would might say. And the aura was obstructing the vision between God and myself. So when God would look over from the judge, God was the judge. And he would look over at me. Well, when he looked through the mist of Jesus, the grace, he, he saw a, somebody nice, a nice defendant, got a suit on, uh, I don't know, giving money out of charities, all kinds, of, just the good. He saw the good in me. And so, you know, and I always kind of thought that God was like, what? What are you saying? Let me look at those. Ac Obviously, God doesn't need to look at the accusations. But in my mind, he's like, let me let me look at this. And he's like looking at all the stuff that I've done. But then he looks up back up and looks through that aura again. And he doesn't see any of that. And and that I don't know if that's a, a very good example of the grace, but but it is that grace 
that covers us and it covers a multitude of sin. And so the way that we get that covering are we, we allow Jesus to be our lawyers by accepting him as our savior. And then we receive all of God's grace. But God's grace does more than just save you and, and take away your sin. It allows us to come into a personal, close relationship with God. And that's what we were created for. We were created in His image so that He could have someone that freely chose. That's why He gave us free will, so that we could freely choose to be in a relationship with Him. And that's why He has good things for us. He gives us good gifts. And this world tries to take us away from that and tries to put shame on us. But ask, you got to ask Christ to be your Savior so you can have Him as your lawyer. So all those accusations from the devil just do not make it to God. And, you, and we receive that grace so that we can be saved, yes, but also just so that we can have the fullness of life that we were created to have. And I'm an, I, I can testify to it because I was the worst of the worst. And I know I'm on track to be the best of the best. Not, not the best of the best in the world's eyes, but the best of the best to God. And just meaning like content, happy, the best that I can be on this world. It took a long time to get here and it was a hard road, but I thank God for all of it because it makes me appreciate it so much more and when you're in that close relationship with God you can literally take walks with him and I do that these days and it's just so amazing just to spend time with God and walk and enjoy his creation his creation is like is like therapy for our soul that's why he put it there and I really encourage you no matter where you're at to start taking walks with God okay it's amazing Talk to Him, walk with Him. Okay? And that may be really hard for you to do. I mean, you may say, my mind is going a thousand miles an hour. I can't, you know, I got work. I got all of this. I, I've got too many things to do. Well, glad you said that because I got an answer for you. And the answer is mindfulness and meditation. When I got out of Honey Lake, I was at such a mountaintop high that I thought the only thing that it could do is go down. But I started researching mindfulness and meditation and the things that they had taught me at Honey Lake. And I really started practicing those. And, it, and I, I gotta tell you that it just gets better. Every single week goes by. I look back at the week before and I just, I can't believe that it's even better than it was before. Every week I just think that I'm at the, the high, but now I'm starting to realize that the well I draw from is deep. And that is God. The reason why mindfulness and meditation is so important is because it, it builds your ability to focus your attention. So right now with social media and work and everything that's going on in your life, it's probably really hard to even think about taking a walk with God and just talking with Him. But that's where the meditation comes in and the mindfulness comes in. It's building up that part of your brain that right now is all over the place, but it builds up that muscle that can controls that focus and allows you to put the focus on whatever it is. My favorite definition of mindfulness is paying attention to the present moment without judgment or bias. We're going to explore mindfulness a lot on this channel, but for this video to keep it short, a few ways that you can do mindfulness is one, just when you're in the shower, pay attention in the shower. Most of us, our minds are thinking about the day and everything that we've got going on, just, just pay attention to the water hitting your skin and pay attention to the steam or the temperature of the water and how it is making your head, just pay attention. When you're paying attention, you're building up the muscle that allows you to pay attention. One of the things that I've been doing lately is to just try to pay attention while I'm eating. I have always eaten so fast that, you know, now I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna pay attention. How does it taste? And, and chew it slowly, make sure that I'm chewing slowly and really pay attention to the bites. That may not be a big thing for some of you guys, but I have always eaten so fast that when I started just being mindful of it, it really changed my experience of, of eating to something much better.
I really like yoga as well because when you are doing yoga, you're paying attention to the positions that you're in, you're stretching. It's, I've tried to sometimes uh, get on a Zoom call in my earbud while I do yoga and it doesn't work very well because yoga just re really helps bring your attention into the moment. And so I'd highly recommend yoga as well. Now, one of the ones that you've probably heard of is focusing on your breathing. And so when you focus on your breathing, you really just pay attention to how the air is, feels as it goes through your nostrils and, and pay attention. And what I try to do is try to fill that air into my diaphragm because doing that, it kind of goes against, it, it takes attention. It's not just how you naturally breathe. And when you're paying attention to your breath, when you are meditating and you're relaxing, another thing that I really like to do is feel the earth pull me. I just feel like I kind of pretend like the earth is hugging me and pulling me down with the gravity. You may think that's kind of weird, but try it. I mean, if you just really focus on it, you'll start feeling it. And it feels pretty crazy. Like you can almost feel like, oh, I can't get up. I mean, obviously, if you move your muscles, you can. But that's your, you're meditating. You're, you're doing mindfulness when you do that. These are some of the areas that mindfulness can help you in besides your relationship for God. Your pain tolerance. I know everybody could deal with a little less pain. Your awareness. Your emotional regulation. Your introspection to be able to look at yourself a little bit better. It also helps with your earthly relationships and your ability to express your emotions and your thoughts. And but one of the biggest things is, is probably rumination. It reduces rumination. Rumination is the, the going over the same thing in your head and it, it can re, you can just repeat the same thought over and over and over. And people with depression have a problem with rumination. So mindfulness, that's why mindfulness can help bring you out of depression because it can come in and it stops that cycle. And because it stops that cycle, that allows you to start creating new neural pathways. If you don't know about new neural pathways, I'm gonna put a link in the description. I got a good video that'll kind of help you understand it. Mindfulness, it will change your life. God saved my life, but mindfulness changed my life. And I'm telling you, just stick around on this channel. We're gonna learn a lot about mindfulness because the goal of this channel is to impart to you the gift that I have been given, which is freedom and contentment beyond my heart's desire. It's amazing, guys. And, and I know that mindfulness had a lot to do with it, okay? Hey, comment down there. Tell me what you'd like me to do a video on and tell me if you like this or if you didn't like it. Hit that dislike button. Ha, I got you. Actually, hit that like button or dislike button. It really doesn't matter. The point is to help the algorithm. And also, hit the subscribe button because I'm a new channel. My new videos aren't going to pop up to you unless you put the subscribe button. So if you like this content, hit it, smash it. All right. Hey, I appreciate y'all sticking around if you're still listening to me ramble. I hope I gave you some good info. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.